good morning everyone so uh, we were looking into the various you know uh, the the modeling aspects of membrane based separation processes and yesterday we last in the last class we uh, talked about uh, the concentration polarizations the problems associated with concentration polarization various manifestations of concentration polarization and how it uh, how it uh, you know it, it uh, hinders the productivity of the process and uh, every every aspect of manifestation of concentration polarization will lead to a decrease decrease in productivity of the permeate flux of the system now in today's class what we'll see in the first we'll see that how we can minimize actually we cannot avoid concentration polarization how we can minimize concentration polarizations and including the concentration polarizations what are the various models how uh, to provide the performance of the system okay so first we talk about minimization of concentration polarization the first aspect to minimize concentration polarization is to increase turbulence in the system such that the deposition over the membrane surface will be disturbed or it will decrease okay so uh, there are if you have a start cell for start cell filtration experiments or filtration runs one can simply minimize concentration polarization by increasing turbulence in the system increasing turbulence and turbulence can be increased by increasing the stirrer speed that is one option in case of continuous cell continuous filtration cell we call it continuous cross flow i will come to why it is cross why it is termed as cross flow continuous cross flow cell the uh, what what happens suppose this is a membrane filtration unit the feed is being pumped from a feed tank and it is pushed through the cell in the bottom and the top there will be membrane surface and there will be pressure gauge here and the retentate can be recycled back to the feed stream and one can get the permeate from the bottom and this stream is called retentate now by increasing the feed velocity over the membrane surface what it will do it will decrease the deposition of the solutes over the membrane surface so one can increase the feed velocity over the membrane surface and uh, and decrease the concentration polarization thickness of the concentration polarization layer so in a sense what you will be getting since the thickness of concentration polarization will decrease the permeate flux will increase because it offers less resistance against the solvent flux so one can get in an increased productivity now feed is flowing over the membrane surface tangentially so uh, the surface of the membrane and the direction of the feed flow they are parallel okay on the other hand the permeate that is coming that is at 90 degree with the direction of that flow that's why it is called a cross flow system this angle is 90 degree or this this system is called a cross flow system or sometimes it is called a tangential filtration system as well okay either it is called a cross flow system because of this uh, cross flow of the permeate with respect to retentate or the feed or it is called tangential flow because feed is allowed to flow tangentially over the membrane surface so therefore one can by by inducing such flow in the system one can decrease the thickness of concentration boundary layer and can reduce the 
concentration polarization layer and consequently one can have an increase in the permeate flux or the productivity of the system. Okay. Now, once we, so therefore, we should admit that we cannot uh, avoid concentration polarization, we can minimize it maximum. So, with including the concentration polarization, let us see how we can do, uh, we, we can have a system per, uh, prediction of the system performance. Now, prediction of system performance, basically there are two aspects in the prediction. One is the productivity of the process, that means permeate flux. Another is permeate concentration CP. Okay. Now, let us first take the osmotic pressure model. Now, osmotic pressure model is quite important in the case of reverse osmosis, nano filtration, filtration of uh, even to some extent ultra filtration when you are talking about filtration of polymers and proteins. Polymers protein etcetera. Now, we have already seen that in case of reverse osmosis and nano filtration, since the pore size will be extremely small, the osmotic pressure plays an important role. On the other hand, in case of ultra filtration, when you are talking about filtration of polymers and proteins, osmotic pressure of these solutes becomes significant because of several aspects like structure interactions, membranes, uh, polymer interactions, things like that. So, therefore, osmotic pressure becomes very important. So, in the in the case of membrane system separation system, almost 70 percent of the filtration that we can think of ranging from uh, um, uh, reverse osmosis to ultra filtration, they are osmotic pressure controlled. So, therefore, the osmotic pressure model becomes of utmost importance and we should discuss about the osmotic pressure model. So, the first equation that you will be getting about the solvent flux or the permeate flux will be the Darcy's law. Okay. So, so as, as we have discussed in the last class, any membrane based model will be having two distinct part. One is the model that will be that will be simulating the flow outside the membrane channel that will be including the fluid flow and mass transfer and another will be that, that will be coupled with the fluid flow phenomena that is occurring or happening within the porous membrane. So, these two will be coupled and one will be getting a system performance. So, Darcy's law will give you the uh, equation for the solvent flux through the porous membrane and if you remember J is equal to L p into delta p minus delta pi. What is L J? J is the solvent, uh, solvent flux or the permeate flux, it will be having, it is a volumetric permeate flux, it will be having a unit of meter cube per meter square second. Okay. So, let us make this thing very clear, meter cube per meter square second, it is known as the volumetric flux. And what is LP? LP is the membrane permeability and it, it will be having a unit of flux is meter cube per meter square second, it is basically having a unit of meter per second. This meter square is basically per unit membrane area. So, you will be having meter per second divided by Pascal, this Pascal comes out from the pressure on the other side. Delta P is the operating pressure difference across the membrane, feed pressure and minus the permeate pressure. In most of the cases, permeate pressure is atmospheric pressure, therefore, the gauge pressure in the feed side will give you the delta P. And what is delta pi? Delta pi is the osmotic pressure difference across the membrane. Now, uh, let us let us try to find out what is osmotic pressure difference across the membrane. So, delta pi will be pi on the membrane surface in the 
membrane feed interface minus pi of the permeate stream. Okay. So, and we know that osmotic pressure is a colligative property, it is an ever increasing function of concentration. So, therefore, pi can be expressed as B 1 C plus B 2 C square plus B 3 C cube. Okay. So, therefore, delta pi will be B 1 C m plus B 2 C m square plus B 3 C m cube minus B 1 C p plus minus B 2 C p square minus B 3 C p cube. Right. So, at membrane surface the concentration of solute is basically C m that is the concentration of the solute at the membrane feed interface and C p is the permeate concentration. So, therefore, you can write this thing in a compact form C m minus C p plus B 2 C m square minus C p square plus B 3 C m cube minus C p cube. Now, we can have the uh, an equation of solute transport. So, so the what, what we are talking about is basically Darcy's law. Darcy's law is nothing but the solvent transport through the porous membrane. Now, we must be having some kind of law which will which will dictate the solute transport across the membrane and ultimately it will give a relationship of the solute concentration in the upstream of the membrane and downstream of the membrane. The simplest one that we have discussed in the last class is real retention. Okay. Let us define a real retention RR which is constant for a particular membrane solute system is nothing but C m minus C p. So, therefore, you can eliminate C p from this equation of delta pi in favor of C m because RR becomes constant, RR is constant. So, what is C m? C m is nothing but what is C p? C p is nothing but C m into 1 minus RR. Right. Now, yeah, yeah, I will just derive it. Uh, C m minus divided by C p will be uh, 1 minus R r. So, uh, C m will be C p into 1 minus R r. So, I, I, I think uh, there is a mistake there, RR will be 1 minus C p by C m, it will remember the definition of RR. Uh, yeah. Real retention will be nothing but 1 minus C p by C m, if you just, just look into the definition of RR and observe retention of what we have defined is 1 minus C p by C naught. Okay. So, if you look into the definition of RR, C m can be uh, C p can be written as C m into 1 minus R r. Okay. Now, we substitute uh, the expression of permeate concentration in the, in the expression of delta pi or osmotic pressure difference in favor of C m. If we do that, the expression of C delta pi will be nothing but B 1 C m R r plus B 2 C m square 1 minus R r square minus 1 plus B 3 C m cube, uh, I think it is 1 minus 1 minus R r and this will be C m cube 1 minus 1 minus R r whole cube. Okay. So, once you get this expression so, you can you can you can uh, so what is delta pi? Delta pi is nothing but a function of C m only because R r is constant and the coefficients B 1 to B 3 are known to you. Now, we write down the expression of the film theory J is equal to K L n C m minus C p divided by C naught minus C p. So, k is mass transfer coefficient, let us write C m minus C p is nothing but C m times R r and C p can be replaced in favor of R r as in favor of C m as 1 minus R r. So, you have now, now you can equate 
the Darcy's law, the expression of the solvent flux from Darcy's law and expression of the solvent flux from the film theory. And what you will, will, will obtain that you will be getting an algebraic equation in term of C m only. Okay. So, j is equal to L p delta p minus delta pi is equal to k l n C m r r divided by C naught into minus C m 1 minus r r and delta pi is nothing but a function of C m in terms of a real retention and the coefficient and expression of the osmotic pressure. So, basically you will be getting an algebraic equation L p delta p minus delta pi which is a function of C m that we have already seen minus k l n C m r r divided by C naught minus C m 1 minus r r equal to 0. So, this equation is nothing but some nonlinear algebraic equation in terms of C m because <coughs> permeable membrane permeability is known to you, you can find out from a separate set of experiment delta p is the operating pressure that is known to you. In the expression of delta pi, we have uh, coefficients of osmotic pressure those are known to you and value of real retention that can be estimated from a separate set of experiment from a that we have discussed earlier. K is the mass transfer coefficients, there are correlations and theoretical relations are available for mass transfer coefficient depending on the flow geometry and the flow regime one can find out the appropriate equation and evaluate the value of mass transfer coefficient knowing the properties of the fluid and the solid solute and real retention is known C naught is the fit concentration that is nothing but an operating condition. So, by using trial and error solution one can use Newton Raphson method there are other iterative algorithms can also be available. like regular falsy uh, successive substitution so using any iterative technique one can evaluate the value of cm from the above expression it's basically a trial and error solution Once you know the value of C m, one can go back to the expression of permeate flux either of these two expression and put the value of C m, one can estimate the value of permeate flux or the productivity of the process and uh, one can go to the expression of C p, if you remember C p is nothing but C m into 1 minus real retention. Okay. So, one can get the value of permeate flux or the productivity of the process, one can get the value of permeate quality or permeate concentration. Now, whole thing depends how accurate you are in the uh, uh, in getting the definition of mass transfer coefficient, how good that correlation that you are using for your system number one, number two how good your estimation of real retention. Okay. Now, we will look into some, some of the simplified version of this since it is a trial and error solution there is no analytical expression or solution that, that becomes that is there in front of you. So, we can get some simplified version of the osmotic pressure uh, model. The first simplification that we will be doing for all this calculation is that we will be considering pi is not a polynomial of concentration, but it will be linear in concentration. Let us say pi is equal to bc, this will be occurring for the case of salts, monovalent and divalent salts and dilute solution of proteins polymers. Under this concentration uh, condition, now, there can be several cases, the first case is no concentration polarization.
when that can happen that can, that means C m is equal to C naught that can happen when you have very high stirring speed or turbulence in your feed channel. This can happen high turbulence. In this case the concentration is so uniform in the feed chamber that there is no polarization. It is the concentration of the solute throughout the feed chamber is always C naught. Okay. In that case e to the power j by k will be equal to 1 and the permeate flux becomes j is equal to L p delta p minus b times r r times c naught. Okay. So, therefore, the osmotic pressure corresponding to the feed concentration will be basically giving you the contribution from the osmotic pressure expression and that will be so in fact your delta p is probably quite high compared to the osmotic pressure of the feed solution. So, you can easily neglect it. So, it will be almost giving you the pure water flux expression. <coughs> this is known as the pure water flux because for pure water there is no osmotic pressure contribution that is number one and what will be the uh, permeate concentration? Permeate concentration will be the, the, it, the um, uh, C p will be one minus C p by C naught. So, uh, okay. Your, your, your observed retention becomes real retention in that case because there is no constant there is uh, 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 because C m is equal to C, C naught right. So, observed retention becomes real retention and uh, the, the concentration of permeate can be obtained from by 1 minus r r times C naught. Okay. The second simplification that we can think about is low polarization. I think we have discussed the condition of high polarization and low polarization earlier in our, in our class. Low polarization means the condition where C m will be low. C m will be low if you have a low feed concentration, if you have low delta p the transmembrane operating pressure and a very high turbulence. Turbulence will be very high for example, the turbulence very high means your mass transfer coefficient has to be very high. These are the conditions which will favor the low polarization conditions prevailing in the membrane channel. Under this situation e to the power j by k can be uh, can, can, can be can be expanded uh, um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a series in an infinite series 1 by j by k plus j by k square factorial to plus higher order terms and since the mass transfer coefficients are pretty high it can happen that j by k will be much much less than 1. Under this case we can neglect the higher order terms and this expansion exponential expansion is valid and one can have e to the power j by k as 1 plus j by k. Okay. Under this condition one can combine film theory and Darcy's law Okay, in the expression of the film theory, you just put C m minus uh, C p divided by C naught minus C p e to equal to e to the power j, j by k and in, instead of e to the power j by k, one can put 1 plus j by k and you have the Darcy's law and combine these two final and combining after combination of these two equation, one can get a final expression something like this L p times delta p minus b r r C naught 1 plus j by k divided by r r plus 1 minus r r 1 plus j by k. Now, if you look into this expression in this expression only one unknown is there that is permeate flux or j every other parameter unknown to us and this gives a quadratic in j. Now, this quadratic equation can be solved I am not writing that solution of the equation. 
this quadratic equation in j can be solved and one can get the prediction of the system performance in terms of the productivity of the process. And once you get uh, j, you can easily find out what is the membrane surface concentration that is C m and once you know the C m, you can get uh, the value of permeate concentration from the definition of real retention that C p is equal to C m into 1 minus R r. Okay. So, that is how this case can be solved. Now, case number 3 will be low polarization, the earlier one. And C p is equal to 0, that means it is a perfectly retentive membrane as far as the solute is concerned, perfectly retentive membrane. So, in this case, the expression becomes simplified further j is equal to L p delta p minus b c naught into 1 plus j by k. Under this condition perfectly retentive membrane, your real retention becomes 1. That means, your real retention becomes 1 and the expression becomes simplified and one can have a simplification of this as L p into delta p minus b times c naught divided by 1 plus b c naught L p over k. Okay. Uh, now, one so, so basically what is this? This is the permeability, this is the driving force delta p minus b c naught and the osmotic pressure contribution will come only from the feed concentration. Okay. And we will disc, uh, now we can um, uh, and what is the, the terms in the denominator? They will give some kind of resistance. Okay. So, one can define a membrane resistance R m, R m is membrane resistance it is called membrane hydraulic resistance and the definition is it is inversely proportional to the membrane permeability like the definition of conductivity and resistance in electrical transport. Okay. So, it is inversely proportional to the membrane permeability. So, it is defined as R m is equal to 1 over mu times L p. What is mu? Mu is the viscosity of permeating solution. In most of the cases permeating solutions are very, very dilute. So, therefore, the viscosity will be close to the viscosity of water. And uh, if now, now if you, if you, if you look into the definition, the units of mu Pascal second and uh, unit of L p, one can come come to the conclusion that R m will be having a unit of meter inverse. So, that is the definition of membrane hydraulic resistance and membrane permeability and unit of membrane resistance. Now, if I substitute L p in terms of membrane resistance, the whole terms in the denominator can be divided into two resistive terms. Let us let us substitute them and, and see what we get. So, if you do that, you will be getting j is equal to delta p minus b c naught divided by mu times r m plus b c naught by k. Okay. So, this expression gives the numerator, gives the driving force and what is the driving force? Delta p minus b c naught, the driving force actually is delta p, it will be reduced by osmotic pressure contribution from the feed concentration. The first term of the denominator the first term of denominator gives the membrane resistance membrane hydraulic resistance. The second term if you remember what, what is the mass transfer coefficient? It is inverse of the resistance offered by the mass transfer boundary layer or concentration boundary layer. So, this gives the resistance due to mass transfer boundary layer or polarization, concentration polarization. 
boundary layer or concentration polarization. Now, if you remember that these two resistances are in series, this is the membrane, this is the concentration boundary layer right? or mass transfer boundary layer, here it is C naught and here it will be C m, the polarization, polarization layer will be here. So, this resistance is given by this term and this resistance are given by this term, they are in series. So, therefore, delta p by uh, the, the driving force divided by summation of these two resistances will be giving you the solvent flux or the productivity of the process. So, under these simplified cases, one can have various simplified expressions of solvent flux or and permeate concentration, but in an actual case where you do not have such simplification then these two equations have to be solved by trial and error by using some appropriate iterative algorithm as we have discussed earlier. Now, if you remember that all in all these discussions and the models, one term becomes very important that is the determination of the accuracy of real retention. The, we have defined one method determination of real retention is basically a partition coefficient between C p and C m. How we determine real retention if you remember we, we conduct the experiment in a, in, a, in a start batch cell at a very high starting speed. So, that C m will be roughly equal to C naught and in that case what, what is the observed retention you will be getting that means, you measure the permeate concentration you know the feed concentration. So, observed retention will be known to you and observed retention will be almost equal to real retention. So, this since real retention is constant for a particular membrane solute system, we utilize that. Then another method to find the real retention is from the film theory. Find or estimate real retention from film theory. If you look into the expression of film theory, C m minus C p divided by C naught minus C p is equal to exponential j by k. Okay. Now, what we will be doing? We will be uh, substituting the definition of real, uh, real retention and observed retention and eliminate this C m and C p. So, uh, if you remember the definition of observed retention, observed retention will be is 1 minus C p divided by C naught. So, therefore, C p is nothing but C naught into 1 minus R. And what is real retention? That is 1 minus C p by C m. So, C p is nothing but C m into 1 minus r r is 1 minus r o. Now, we substitute this in the expression of um, in the above expression that means, we evaluate C naught. What is C naught? C naught is nothing but C p divided by 1 minus r o okay. and what is C m? C m is nothing but C p divided by 1 minus r r. Now, substitute this in the expression of the film theory that is uh, C m minus C p divided by C naught minus C p equal to exponential j by k. If you do that, what you will be getting? Uh, C m will be nothing but C p divided by 1 minus r r minus C p, C naught will be C p divided by 1 minus r naught minus C p is equal to exponential j by k. Now, C p will be cancelled from all the terms. So, what we will be getting is 1 by 1 minus r r minus 1 divided by 1 by 1 minus r o minus 1 is equal to exponential j by k. Okay. So, just simplify it. Uh, you will be getting r r divided by 1 minus r r is equal to uh, uh, that is in the denominator in the in the numerator 
and in the denominator it will be this simply uh, r naught divided by 1 minus r naught. Okay. Now, if you take logarithm on both side, they will be logarithm and this exponential will be off. So, if you take logarithm of both side, it will be l n r r 1 minus r r minus l n r naught 1 minus r naught is equal to j by k. Okay. So, l n r naught divided by 1 minus r naught will be nothing but l n r r 1 minus r r minus j by k. Once you get this expression, now let us see what in this expression, what are the various terms that can be experimentally measurable. We can experimentally find out the value of observed retention, because we know the feed concentration, you know the you can experimentally measure the parameter case, you can analyze the parameter stream and get the parameter concentration. So, you know the value of observed retention. Real retention that is your aim to find out, you know the experimental value of parameter flux, you can measure the solvent flux and that is that will be known. You can get the value of mass transfer coefficient by adopting an appropriate mass transfer relationship based on the geometry and the flow regime. Now, if you vary the now now you, you, what you can do you can vary the conditions what are the vari variation of the conditions the condition is that you vary the cross flow velocity or the turbulence in the system either if it is a start cell you vary the starter speed you conduct the experiment with one particular starter speed let us say 1000 rpm measure the permeate flux measure the permeate concentration so you know the r naught you know the j for that particular starter speed now, under the same delta P, you change the starter speed to let us say 1500 rpm, conduct the experiment, know the value of J and R naught. Likewise, you can you can generate a series of data at various levels of turbulence and can get the value of J and R naught. In the cross flow system through a rectangular geometry or a tubular one, one can vary the, the velocity, cross flow velocity by changing the uh, uh, pump setting. Okay. So, one can have generate one can generate various values of uh, you know levels of turbulence in the cross flow system as well and measure the value of j and a uh, real retention. So, now if you plot if you if you do so that means, if you change the turbulence or velocity in a in a uh, rectangular cross flow cell you can generate various values of r naught and, uh, and and various values of j by k and if you plot l n r naught divided by 1 minus r naught versus j by k, you can expect a series of straight lines depending and, and you know with, with, a, with a declining slope. The straight lines will be something like this. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, you will not be getting these lines, the plots will look something like this l n r naught by 1 minus r naught divided by j by k, it will be something like this. And th th these curves are basically for various values of mass transfer coefficient, for various values of mass transfer coefficient. Now, if you extend this curve, if you, if you, if you extend this curve, you will see that all these curves will basically merge to a particular point on the y axis, the intercept and from the intercept, what is the intercept? The intercept is, is nothing but l n 1 r r divided by 1 minus r r. Okay. So, from that one can estimate the value of real retention. Since this method will be uh, and this method will be the accuracy of this method will be extremely de depending on the how accurately you will conduct the experiment. Okay. So, because you, will, you are varying the, uh, the cross flow velocity that means, you are changing the mass transfer coefficient and you are estimating the value of j and real observed retention. 
So, how accurately you can conduct the experiments depending on that one can get the estimation of real retention from the intercept of this plot. Since this method depends on the variation of the cross flow velocity, this method is known as the velocity variation technique. So, by using velocity variation technique, one can estimate the real retention. In this case, the since you are drawing the mean curves, the, uh, the inaccuracies involved in the experiments will be averaged out. Okay. So, by using velocity variation technique, one can estimate the real retention, one can estimate the real retention the way you have discussed earlier. So, using these two methods, one can have the value of real retention and can do the system modeling as you have described earlier. Now, we will look into the uh, very various complicated systems. For example, if, uh, if you remember, we, we, we talked about the during the modeling, we talked about two, two things or two aspects. One is the modeling of the uh, flow outside the membrane, another is the modeling of the flow through the porous membrane. And through the porous membrane, the uh, one thing is that you have the, um, uh, the solute transport law. The solution transport law or the, or the solvent transport law is different, be given by the Darcy's law. The solute transport can be defined by two ways. One is the def, uh, by a real retention that is nothing but a partition coefficient between the um, uh, solute concentrated across the membrane surface or a more realistic way to describe this is solution diffusion model. If you remember. model that is J times C p is nothing but B times 1 minus uh, C m minus C p. This is a solution diffusion model. So, basically either you use the real retention that is very gross and or use a solution diffusion model. This is really very gross because it gives only a partition coefficient. It is, it is ad hoc, ad hoc definition of um, uh, relationship between C m and C p, but this definition is based on the physics of the system. So, it is more realistic. Now, we will see if we incorporate this a solution diffusion model to describe the solute, solute transport through the membrane, how the equations will be solved. The solvent transport is still given by Darcy's law and for the case sake of simplicity, we assume pi is equal to A times C, that is linear. The same thing can be, if the same method can be utilized for if you have an a polynomial relationship of osmotic pressure with concentration. For the sake of demonstration, I am just taking of taking a linear relationship of pi as a function of concentration. Now, we use the solute solvent transport uh, Darcy's law. J is equal to L p times del p minus del pi. Okay. This gives an expression of you know after non-dimensionalization J naught times 1 minus alpha C m minus C p. Okay. What is J naught? J naught is nothing but L p times del p. I take delta p common. So, L p times delta p is nothing but J naught. J naught has the has a physical significance. What is the physical significance? L p times delta p is the permeate flux when we use the use pure solvent. In pure solvent, there is no, uh, no question of osmotic pressure. So, J naught is L p delta p. So, therefore, for any membrane separation system which is operating under delta p, you should expect a maximum flow rate or maximum productivity L p times delta p. If you use a solution that the, flow, the productivity of the permeate flux will be always less than L p times delta p. So, J naught is the maximum permeate flux. When, when, the, when you can expect the maximum permeate flux in your system? at the very first instance before onset of concentration polarization. Therefore, for any j, it will be less than j naught. And what is alpha? Alpha is alpha is nothing but a times delta p. What is a? a is the osmotic coefficient since you have taken delta p common. So, alpha is nothing but a by delta p. So, alpha is a non-dimensional osmotic coefficient. Okay. 
Now, we couple this equation with the film theory equation. So, what you get is J naught 1 minus alpha C m minus C p is equal to k ln C m minus C p divided by C naught minus C p. Now, we, we do not know so, th so, there is one equation that contains two unknown C m and C p and we do not know the relationship between C m and C p. In this case, we are not going to use the definition of real retention that will connect C m and C p. We will be using a more fundamental equation that is the solution diffusion model. So, if you use solution diffusion model, you get another equation that will be connecting C m and C p. j times C p equal to b times C m minus C p. Now, we can combine uh, 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 and what is j? j is j you can use the Darcy's law and you can get j naught 1 minus alpha C m minus C p is equal to b times C m minus C p divided by C p. Okay? Now, this equation can be simplified to 1 minus alpha times C m plus alpha times C p is equal to beta times C m minus C p divided by C p. What is beta? Beta is nothing but B by J w, J, J naught. Okay. So, one can, uh, one can get the expression of C m out of it in favor of C p. That will be very simple. C m will be equal to C p into 1 plus 1 by beta plus alpha C p. Okay. So, in fact, you can uh, derive all these relations on your own and can confirm. And now, you C m into this governing equation, the, the film theory equation and the Darcy's law and can get an expression of an, a nonlinear algebraic equation on C p only. Now, if you substitute the expression of C m here, let us see what you get. All you get is B J W J naught alpha C p plus beta minus K L n C p alpha C p plus beta into C naught minus C p is equal to 0. So, you will be getting this beta will be known alpha will be known, J naught will be known, uh, mass transfer coefficient will be known, fit concentration will be known. So, again it will, do, it will be give you, give you a nonlinear algebraic equation in terms of C p. So, you can use a trial and error method. To obtain the value of C p. Once you know the value of C p, you can substitute in any of the equation and can get the estimate of j. Okay. If the value, if, 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 if there is only one parameter, if you remember this parameter is the solute permeability through the membrane that is B is known to you. Okay. In most of the cases, this B are uh, the solute parameter for a particular membrane is not known. So, in this, in, in that case, whatever, what is done is that we assume a value of B, assume a value of B. So, now, now everything is known. Now, you estimate C p and J and compare this calculated value of C p and J uh, for with the um, uh, for various operating conditions with the experimentally measured values and you create a an objective function S as summation of uh, J experimental minus J calculated, this will be J calculated divided by J experimental square of that plus summation C p experimental minus C p calculated, this will be C p calculated divided by C p experimental square. 
Now, we, we, we compare with the experimental results that means, we compute the mean square difference, okay? uh, sum, of, sum of all square differences. Now, why this is divided by J experimental and this is divided by CP experimental, we can understand the numerator. Numerator is basically the difference between the experimental value and the calculated value in both the cases, CP as well as J. It is divided by J because of the order of magnitude of the two, two quantities. Typically, the value of the solvent flux will be in the order of 10 to the power minus 4 to 10 to the power minus 6 from microfiltration to reverse osmosis. On the other hand, permeate concentration will be some ppms, let us say 1 ppm, 2 ppm, 10 ppm, something like that. So, if you compute this square and if you compute this square, there will be mismatch in the order and you will be landing up with a wrong conclusion or calculation. But if you divide it by J experimental, the whole thing becomes of the order of 1 and the thing within this bracket will be of order of 1. Now, they will be incomparable in magnitude and one can do the minimization of this um, objective function S by. So, basically you do a, the, the, uh, this, this trial and error method will be the actual algorithm or actual program over and above you hook up with the uh, with an optimizer by using IMSL library or any or MATLAB or whatever optimizer, just hook up that optimizer and compute this sum and minimize this sum S, minimize S. In, so that means, you guess a value of B, compute S, you guess another value of B and compute S. If S is further lower, you guess another value of B and compute S. Likewise, you just find the minimum value of S and the corresponding value of B will be the optimized parameter. What is the role of optimizer? What the, the instance I said, you guess a value of B, that is the guess value compute the value of S and for the whether it is minimum or maximum or whatever the value it is, you have to have another another cal calculation. So, you guess a next value of B and compute S. The optimizer, there is an inbuilt algorithm in the optimizer itself, the next what will be the next value of B, the optimizer calculates itself okay? and one can uh, iteratively, uh, one can do several iterations, can land up with a minimum value of S by which will be set by a tolerance value. You set a tolerance value 10 to the minus 3 or 10 to the minus 2, when it will be met the program will be stopped and S will be giving the minimum and the value of B will be the optimized parameter. Okay. So, once we understand this algorithm, now let us try to have a comparison between the two methods. One is the real retention. RR and then is the solution diffusion model. This is fundamentally more correct. Because it is derived from the thermodynamics that we have derived earlier. On the other hand, this is an ad hoc parameter. It is like a partition coefficient, which is constant for a, which is assumed to be constant for a particular membrane solute system. On the other hand, estimation of real retention is simpler. And most importantly, it can be estimated from a separate set of experiment. Okay. On the other hand, the estimation of the solution permeable, solute permeability through the membrane, the parameter B, it is estimation is difficult. Why it is difficult? Because it involves the same set of uh, uh, the, the experiments in involving the same solution, same solute and, uh, um, uh, and, and the um, fit solution under the same operating conditions, because you, you require the same experimental data to evaluate B. On the other hand, in real retention, you require a separate set of experimental data to 
to estimate real retention. So, th these are the major differences between the real retention and the solution diffusion model. So, one can use any of these models equivalently depending upon the uh, upon the system one can have. The next variation now we will look into the some more variations of uh, solution diffusion models which are more fundamentally correct because in solution diffusion model we have assumed that the solute will be transported across the membrane by the concentration gradient only by diffusion only. It may not happen as I told our in the last class that there will be imperfection in the membrane. No membrane will be having pore size of uniform distributions. There may be higher pore sizes where the convective flux will be more dominant. So, there will be um, uh, the, the extra terms that those will be appearing in the solution diffusion model and coupling them we can uh, and in uh, coupling those equations with the twin theory equation one can have a better system performance that we will be discussing in the next class.